This is Louis Daguerre's interior of a chapel in the Foyer Church in Paris. Sorry about my French. Uh, I actually saw this painting in the Louvre, uh, and so I figured I would do a quick video to talk about it. It's not very well researched. It's a lot of my interpretations. So first off, there's a lot to say about Daguerre and how his life outside of painting uh, connects to what we can take from this painting. Um, but my opinion is that looking at a painting for what it is on the canvas uh, outside of the context first um, can be really valuable, uh, and then we can bring the context in. So when you look at this painting kind of from a distance, what is most striking, I would say, is the contrast that's going on. Um, it's a very dark painting with a tiny peephole of light peeking through where the center is kind of fully illuminated um, and on the outside you have kind of this dark ring of, of deep midnight blacks and kind of emerald tones. Another detail uh, that I thought was interesting is on the archway where all the paintings are hung, there's kind of these thin uh, white lines that appear to be cobwebs from the paintings. I don't think they're actually cobwebs. I, I can't fully tell, but it seems like they're actually cracks on the varnish, but I think it does add to kind of the mood of the painting. So if we think about the feeling of this painting, it feels very kind of dusty and like abandoned. There's this shaft of light coming through that's catching these dust motes that you can imagine have like lain undisturbed for a hundred years maybe. Um, and the shaft of light is coming in and illuminating a tomb actually on the left side. It's the tomb of Raymond Filippo de Herbeau. He died in 1629. The cracks in the walls and uh, in the floor tiles also give like a really intense kind of decrepit air to the building. It feels like this building is crumbling. This painting also communicates a feeling uh, that I think is very, very well laid out by the Dictionary of Obscure Sorrows. It's called Canopsia. Canopsia, a noun. The eerie, forlorn atmosphere of a place that's usually bustling with people, but is now abandoned and quiet. A school hallway in the evening, an unlit office on a weekend, vacant fairgrounds, an emotional afterimage that makes it seem not just empty, but hyper-empty, with a total population in the negative, who are so conspicuously absent they glow like neon signs. This feeling, I think, is especially intense when you get the context that uh, Daguerre painted this in 1814, which was just before this section of uh, the larger convent uh, this chapel was a part of was about to be destroyed. And so given this crumbling state of the building that we see, it's really weird that there's a figure uh, in there. And it's like strange that Daguerre puts the figure in there. Um, he's carrying what seems to be like a potted flower or small plant. Um, and it raises a lot of questions. Like, was he going in there to decorate a sarcophagus and like is now taking out whatever was decorating that? Um, why is he even there in the first place? Is it part of like the demolition? Uh, and if so, why was there even a plant in there? I don't know. His presence feels like a lot of an intrusion on this space. that's kind of crypt-like and dusty, and it feels like there's been no one there for a while. Um, and it's reflected in our experience of the painting because if he shouldn't be there, perhaps we shouldn't also. It feels like we're also intruding on this kind of undisturbed space. So given our exploration of this painting just as it is on the canvas, I think it would be really helpful to talk about Daguerre and some of the things he was thinking about and what he's really known for. Um, Daguerre is actually known as one of the inventors of photography. His status as the inventor of photography is pretty hotly contested, and the truth consists of uh, a lot of collaboration, history rewriting, and lying. <laughs> so can of worms for another day. Suffice it to say, he was important in uh, the development of photography, and one of the kind of most common early photographic uh, methods was the daguerreotype, um, which he certainly helped to uh, develop and popularize. Daguerre also worked as um, a bit of a set designer for theater, uh, and he was responsible for the development of the Diorama Theater, which is a particularly complex uh, theater that had a lot of like shifts in light and perspective tricks to create very intricate and lifelike seeming scenes. Given what we know about Daguerre and his background uh, and what he's known for, we can recontextualize his painting a little bit. So what I see in this painting, um, and I, I'm pretty sure I, we talked about this in a class that I took, but I could not track down the reference. I tried really hard. So if anyone knows uh, who wrote about this um, idea, please let me know. Uh, 
but it looks a whole lot like the inside of a camera, right? So like you have a pinhole that like lets in the light and it is bouncing in through uh, somewhat like a lens um, to the wall of this darkened space. It it operates a whole lot like a camera obscura, which is kind of the basis of uh, how a camera works. So a camera obscura happens when uh, you're in a dark room and you open a small hole to the outside uh, and the light comes in and projects a flipped image of the outside on the back wall. Um, So Daguerre would have been familiar with this uh, as it was known and used by artists for thousands of years since uh, about 500 BC that we know of. And so the basic idea of the film camera is to have a camera obscura with photosensitive film on the back so that the image projected is uh, recorded and saved. So this is not to say that like, ooh, we can like find some like early prototype of the camera hidden in this uh, painting. There's no like you know, Da Vinci Code stuff going on here. But what we can say is that maybe some of these things that Daguerre was looking at and thinking about, uh, you know, were relevant to what he was thinking when he was creating this painting. And so certainly Daguerre was thinking about the ways that light can kind of trace out and affect reality. And so in this painting, we see kind of a single beam of light that carves out a particular reality, right? Like it illuminates some parts of the painting and leaves others in dusty kind of silent darkness. And so the light kind of brings knowledge to particular parts of the interior scene. Um, And this connection between light and knowledge is actually very important given that it is a chapel. Um, Chapels were built to be tall and have high ceilings and large windows to let in light. Um, And the light in Christian tradition is connected to holiness and knowledge uh, in many ways that, again, is another can of worms. So in the same way, cameras are built to take in light and convert them to knowledge of the world, right? Like we can take a picture of something and uh, know more about that thing than we might if we observed it just with our naked eye. So putting ourselves into the context of this chapel as a viewer can give us a bit of a strange perspective. Uh, It makes us think not just about the illumination we're seeing, uh, but a little bit about how the illumination functions as it's coming in and revealing particular knowledge about the space, just like light uh, carves out a particular reality on the film of a camera. It also reminds me a lot of the relationship uh, between photography and reality. A lot of what we would consider the art of photography is how you place the frame around uh, reality or whatever you're observing. So in some ways, Daguerre's painting is a bit of an analog for how photography and film would come to function in the following 100, 200 years, uh, where it takes reality, it puts a frame around it, and it kind of mediates our view of reality as the viewer, um, according to the photographer's vision, right? So in the same way, in this painting, if we're imagining ourselves looking out through the facade of this chapel, um, but it's mediated for us, the frames have been put around it by Daguerre, and we can only see the tiniest bit through the pinhole. This new way of seeing uh, would become increasingly important as film and photography became much more prevalent um, from its uh, introduction around the 1830s all the way to today and this camera that I'm talking to on YouTube. So yeah, that's my read of this painting. Um, It was really cool to see it. It's cool to talk about a painting that I've I've seen. Let me know your thoughts on this painting, and I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about it with me.